I'm C from the Department of Public Health, Preventive Medicine, and I'm from Trinidad, and I've been at SU for about five years now. Okay, you're enjoying it? Very much. That's good, that's good. All right, bioethics. I'm going to start with you, um, Dr. McPherson, bioethics. Let us start out with a definition so that I and the viewers have a better understanding of what exactly is bioethics. Well, bioethics is a very interesting and broad area uh, of scholarly work. So it works uh, in clinical practice, but so bioethics, it has to do with ethics and the question of what ought we to do in certain circumstances. So any ethical issue or question that arises in, uh, in medicine, in nursing, in dentistry, uh, in the sciences, in agriculture, in veterinary medicine, uh, all of those things are areas that bioethics can come and bring or help, try to help to bring a more balanced understanding uh, and lead to better resolutions and prevention of, sure. of problems. I think my colleague sure. would like to add a little more about yeah. the, the background of bioethics sure. that yeah. I think is interesting and important as yeah. well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well. Well, I think when one thinks about ethics, it's always, it's always good to understand where it came from, its genesis, to appreciate what we have today. And I think um, from recorded history, one can appreciate that the concept of ethics derived from the word ethos began with a discussion occurring in the politics in the days of the empire, politics, and also transcending into medicine and philosophy with Aristotle. So we find this idea of ethics being involved in politics, being involved in philosophy, being involved in medicine. So ethics inherently is part of life. Mm -hmm. So with that understanding, it has evolved over time because societies have changed. You have cultures developing various value systems, different understandings of what is the meaning and quality of life. And ethics have served to identify exactly what is critical to have a good life and I think that is the overall understanding which has evolved through history but it remains today trying to promote what is good living and in terms of health and well-being using applications of medicine and health integrating that with ethics towards promoting that overall understanding of good living. Okay. I'm going to ask you that just to make sure that I have a good a good handle on on the whole issue of bioethics. Not too long ago, there was a, a an, an issue with the, for example, the death of of Michael Jackson, and there was a particular doctor yeah. who would have administered some medication and so on, which eventually led to or contributed to his to his passing. Would that be considered an element of of, of bioethics? That would certainly raise interest and discussion and question bioethics about whether that physician was acting in accordance with the standards of his profession and whether he did uh, look f out for the best interests of Michael Jackson. Those kinds of questions have to do with ethics and bioethics. And I, and I would add, I mean, so, so what we've been talking about is somewhat theoretical and out there, but to, to make it more concrete, the kinds of some of the kinds of issues that might be of interest in, in in the Caribbean in the region here would be at the individual level for example if you're a patient on the ward in the hospital uh, how do you feel about your privacy uh, perhaps and I know many of the doctors here at Grenada General are struggling with this uh, does a patient feel their privacy is protected how much does it matter to them maybe it doesn't matter as much as we think it might uh, what about patients who, who have a, a diagnosis of cancer? Should the doctor tell them the bad news or should try to spare them? And so bioethics would look at those kinds of issues. And for example, the patient who, who w has a cancer diagnosis, well, yeah, you want to spare them the pain and suffering and bad news, but at the same time, you might want to give them the opportunity to put their life in order and accomplish the things that they really want to do, their dreams, uh, c complete projects before they get too incapacitated. Mm -hmm. So there are various ways, and bioethics doesn't try to dictate what you should do. It just helps everyone think about the different 
pros and cons and different sides and perspectives and hopefully come up with a better uh, resolution, with the best resolution possible right, right, given right. the situation. Right. I think this has sort of brought it home <laughs> into, into, into the whole Grenadian context. And um, your, your doctor as well. Yeah. Right. So Dr. Bidassi. Um, another another example, another prime example could be um, a diagnosis of, let's say, HIV/AIDS, for example, yeah. where a person diagnosed and then um, um, it's an issue. Of, do you tell the the spouse, for example? Do you mm -hmm. tell the children? Are mm -hmm. they ready to let their family know that they have had, a, for example, a positive diagnosis? Mm -hmm. I suppose this is the question of, of bioethics would come in there clearly. Yeah. Well, one of the the applications of bioethics in that particular context is the issue of informed consent where that particular process is an experience between the healthcare provider and the particular patient, mm -hmm. possibly even including the extended family and friends, where any information that is shared between patient and physician maintains the professional integrity and confidentiality that comes with it. But if you are, are to extend that discussion beyond the, the patient relationship, then that requires a specific informed consent on the part of the patient itself. Mm -hmm. So that um, and, uh, and uh, that discussion comes in, especially when we speak about small island communities, where the issue of information and confidentiality tends to assume greater significance because of the the, the nature of, of small communities and and sharing of inf information. So informed consent is, is a critical application that should address or should work towards setting standards as it relates to sharing information even in the case of HIV AIDS um, with regards to patient and how that information is shared with family members. Right, and informed consent will be providing information to the patient, patient. and getting them to consent or say whether they would like to exactly. give it or not. Yeah, the patient must be fully aware of what information is involved, what are the risks of sharing that information, what are the benefits of sharing that information as well? So, and then the patient will weigh these various, these va these various information in terms of their own level of comfort, and then provide a particular decision-making process as it relates to sharing information. Right, right. Dr. McPherson, there is the forum. and the forum is it's about raising an awareness about bioethics. Could you? Yes, I'm, and I'm so pleased. <laughs> I'm so pleased to have the opportunity to talk about yeah. this. So, uh, about another thing about myself is that I was elected the president of the Bioethics Society of the English-speaking Caribbean. Uh, we call it BSEC for short, Bioethics Society of the English-speaking Caribbean. And uh, this is a, a fairly young society, founded in 2006. And it was the vision of a physician, a Jamaican physician actually, uh, who approached some of his colleagues around the region and, and formed a steering committee to look at the feasibility of creating this society. And uh, I was very skeptical. I, I didn't see it having a chance of succeeding, but it has succeeded and it's thriving. Our membership has grown significantly. And the aim of the society, its mission, brought myself some notes here, is to increase the knowledge of bioethics by promoting dialogue across the English-speaking Caribbean and bring bioethics into animal and human health care, research, and policy. So what BSEC does is every year it holds an annual forum, basically a conference, and it does this on different islands because the idea is to bring bioethics and dialogue to different islands and also to bring the expertise of our members to try to help address issues that are of interest on each in each state basically mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so the interests uh, in Grenada that are kind of have guided the um, the direction of this forum one is what we call clinical ethics that is ethics applied to clinical practice and these issues of privacy and confidentiality are certainly foremost in, in the minds of our doctors here in Grenada at the moment. Uh, and the other has to do more with the environment and how environment affects health. And this is one of the ways that uh, Dr. Badesi and I work uh, closely together on this interest because environmental health is part of public health. Definitely. 
but we both have a concern, as do many others in Grenada and beyond, mm -hmm. with the health impacts of climate change. And so climate change, a lot of people don't realize it has so many very profound uh, effects on our health and on our health systems, mm -hmm. uh, both direct effects through, for example, Ivan and the injury, and indirect effects through affecting our crops and, and food security and safety. So uh, we see a lot of bioethical questions and concerns about how medicine and how uh, health policies are responding and, and we're seeing around the world that they are responding but not very quickly. So anyway, we have a session dealing with environment and climate change and health and bioethics mm -hmm. and we have a session dealing with the clinical ethics and then one other session uh, on that day which will be a more general topics and it will include things like uh, ranging from high-tech medicine to uh, corporal punishment and and the ethics of the impacts and motivations and things so the the forum will be I think a very interesting wonderful day it's on Saturday November the 16th uh, at St. George's University in Bourne Hall yeah. And uh, basically, we want to encourage members of the public who are interested in any of those topics to just come along for any of those sessions. Uh, those of us who are there for the day will register and pay the fee for the day, uh, which includes lunch, and the public is certainly welcome to do that. But, you know, to give up a whole Saturday I know is difficult. It's difficult for me, actually. Uh, but it's worth the cause in my case uh, as the host mm -hmm. but I think uh, the average everyday person or students mm -hmm. uh, might like to just drop in they don't have to pay they can just drop in for the session that interests them but and, it's quite uh, it's quite inexpensive I'm seeing here um, it's just 10 US dollars yes uh, so it's 10 US dollars uh, to register for the day and have lunch if you're a member but if you're not a member it's actually US or 50 EC mm -hmm. um, and uh, for 30 US or 75 EC you can register have lunch and you get the benefit of membership in BSAC through 2014. <laughs> oh, fabulous, fabulous. And so there would be persons, speakers from Jamaica, Trinidad, Grenada, and the United States addressing various topics um, at that forum. Sure. That's mm -hmm. right, yes. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Bidesi, is there anything that you'd like as it relates to sure. the forum? Sure. Yeah. Well, I am presenting, um, together with my colleague, we co-authored a paper on the downturn of West Indies cricket. Cons an ethical consequence of climate change. <laughs> <laughs> now we, we use I'm, I'm interested <laughs> in that. <laughs> we, we use the downturn uh -huh. in, of West Indies cricket as a case example, but the ethical issue really has to do with with the ethical consequence of climate change and the impacts on coastal regions. Mm -hmm. Grenada uh, and the Caribbean and other small states around the world, the population centers are usually in the coastal regions. Right. The majority of our economic activity our food sources, our housing infrastructure is at the coastal regions. And climate change has a direct impact on that. Increase in sea level, increase in extreme weather events, in terms of the impact that damage can have to coastal societies. But more than that, there's a, there's a cultural and a social element to the coastline, where our, our play, our entertainment involves the coastal region. Where the cricket comes in we as well. We used to play cricket on the beach exactly. with the coconut bats. Exactly. So the coconut isn't there. <laughs> the peep. And I grew up. I grew up playing cricket in, on the beach. Um, and you need a lot of sand to play a game of cricket. But if I return to those beaches, I may find it difficult to pitch some marbles because the the amount of sand is no longer there to play cricket or football per se. Never thought of it. So so that that's just a, to give you an idea about the cultural value associated with climate change and what are the ethical issues involved now the ethical issues can in include individual issues as well as collective issues individual in terms of what we do as an individual how do we contribute to climate change and what are the measures that we can take as an individual and then collectively for example what dr mcpherson spoke about looking at policy issues as it pertains to what societies as a whole can actually utilize. For example, moving towards renewable energy, 
looking at reducing our own footprints as small island states and albeit at the global stage we contribute the least to the climate change problem but we disproportionately are affected the most that in itself is an ethical discussion with regards to what are the elements involved in the costing 